Supreme Court decided not to hear in the appeal of the Fort Dix uh, terrorists. Uh, this was a, uh, a recent decision. Uh, you can be uh, uh, convicted, appeal, lose, and then you can appeal to the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court doesn't have to uh, take the appeal, take the case. I mean, thousands of people must appeal to the Supreme Court every year, and they take under 100 cases a year. Fort Dix plot was uh, several years ago. Six men were arrested. They had no uh, no uh, connection or influence from outside overseas uh, uh, entities. They were arrested trying to blow up and kill hundreds of people at uh, Fort, Dix, Fort Dix military base. Four were sentenced to life, one was sentenced to 33 years, and another was sentenced to five years. Uh, the uh, reason they were caught was that the uh, someone, they went to someone to uh, uh, publish a film and of them uh, practicing military techniques and screaming uh, jihad slogans. He reported that to the uh, authorities. They didn't have an undercover operation, and they were arrested, uh, convicted, uh, sentenced, appealed, lost. And now their attorney wants to appeal to the Supreme Court on the argument that the technicalities regarding the uh, type of, of uh, surveillance, electronic surveillance that was done on them was unconstitutional. So he's not uh, challenging whether they were uh, guilty or not of, uh, of the actual uh, plot. But the uh, the constitutionality of the uh, surveillance techniques, which is uh, a routine you know uh, argument to make before a court, yeah, but the, the fruit Supreme, of the poisonous tree. Yeah, uh, the, the Supreme Court uh, turned down the case. Yeah. Next case we had recently was a New York City accountant was pleaded guilty to financing. Uh, uh, terror operations, to uh, providing material support to Al-Qaeda. So, Sabrihan Hassanov traveled uh, greatly throughout the uh, Middle East, numerous, numerous countries. He was an account here, worked uh, at one point at uh, Price Warehouse Cooper, got a uh, $50,000 uh, from an Al-Qaeda source uh, in Yemen to uh, provide material support, all sorts of technological devices to Al-Qaeda. And the prosecutor said that he was, his, his aim was to further uh, technologically advance, to provide technological assistance to Al-Qaeda to make them uh, obviously more, more efficient. He pled guilty. And a Virginia, Virginia man who actually used to uh, live in Brooklyn, Virginia man uh, Mufad Murad, uh, uh, was charged with uh, uh, for a, on a plot for smuggling cash to Hezbollah. He owned a, a car, uh, car car store. His idea was to uh, fill the tires of the car with cash and to ship the cash uh, the car along with the cash overseas. And FBI got got wind of it and uh, monitored him and uh, did an undercover operation and he, he was caught and charged. Finally, uh, there is a very interesting uh, report put out by an Israeli uh, think tank uh, on the, um, the relationship between Al-Qaeda and Iran and its effects both in the Middle East and beyond based on the documents that the uh, SEAL team found at the Bin Laden compound. If you go online, www.terrorism-info.org.il, and click on Al Qaeda, you will get a copy of that uh, report based on the documents found at the Bin Laden compact. Hmm. All right, uh, that is very, very interesting. And we're talking about the uh, memory clip of the week uh, coming up, uh, and that's going to be 3450. Do you want to give a short description of that? We'll take a commercial break right after that, and then we'll bring you back for the second segment. Yeah, the memory clip is uh, 3450, is the Dean of uh, Quranic studies at the Islamic University of uh, Gaza, uh, saying in an interview that they hope to conquer Andalusia, meaning Spain, and to raise the banner of the caliphate over the Vatican, which he calls the Rome of today. So that tells you what their ultimate goal is, uh, if they uh, succeed in their minds, if they succeed in, uh, in Gaza. 
they're not going to retire. They have uh, future plans uh, 